Steve, are you going to be able to get through this book? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it is the Song of Solomon, so it won't be easy. Let's sh- try. Okay. <laughs> this is the Bible in fewer words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 179, The Song of Solomon, chapters 1 through 8. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. I think we ought to just dive right in. Before we do, uh-huh. I have a couple of things to say, or at least one thing. The Song of Solomon, sometimes it's called the Song of Songs. Okay. Sometimes it's called Canticle of Canticles. <laughs> But we're going to call it the Song of Solomon, which it is, I think, in the King James Version. And it starts with verse 1 that says, The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. That's a lot of S's in there. Yeah, it is. This is the place in the Song of Solomon that the name of Solomon is mentioned. So it's claiming that it's written by Solomon. Mm -hmm. Almost no Bible scholars think that it was. It's unlikely that there really even was a person named Solomon, okay. that existed. But if he did, he existed long before this poem was written. Okay. Well, I think we should give people a flavor of what this poem is about. We will with the very next verse. Okay. <laughs> Kiss me, for your love is better than wine. You smell good. That's why the virgins love you. I am black and beautiful. You will lie all night between my breasts. All right, let's take a step back now. Yeah. Is this what the whole thing's going to be about? It is. It's just going to go on <laughs> like that. And, you know, it's just talking. It's going to be horrible for you. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I'm just going to ignore it. <laughs> okay. And I'm also not going to try to interpret it. Sometimes, like mm-hmm. in this chapter, mm-hmm. it's pretty clear what they're talking about, right? I think so. It's hard to think it's anything but just uh, what it sounds like, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think we have to say anything, <laughs> except for the, it is interesting. I am black and beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, that's... Uh, That's curious. So this sounds like a woman. Yeah. And the woman, I guess, may be black and beautiful. Yeah. Well, Solomon had supposedly 700 wives and 300 concubines. Mm -hmm. And all the virgins love him, which those those wouldn't be virgins, right? I don't suppose. So I don't know. Who knows what this is talking about? But it's definitely talking about sex, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's just going to be what we're going to be talking about in this There's no way around that. All right. Your turn. Okay. Chapter 2. As an apple tree is better than other trees, so is my lover better than other men. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. I wonder what that means. Do you really? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's an interesting way of putting it, or whatever it is. (laughs) So maybe he was bringing her raspberries. Yeah, maybe maybe it's just maybe it's just what it says, you know. Maybe just cherries. Fruit. Yeah, Bring well, maybe, cherries. yeah. Okay. His left hand is under my head and his right hand embraces me. Don't disturb him until he pleases me. He feeds among the lilies. <laughs> <laughs> Don't disturb him until he pleases me. So this is the woman talking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let him do his thing. Uh-huh, yeah. Don't, 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 uh, don't interrupt. No. <laughs> Chapter 3. Every night on my bed, I sought my lover but didn't find him. Then I found him and held him and wouldn't let him go until I brought him to my mother's bedroom where she conceived me. Don't disturb him until he pleases me. She's really insistent about that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Chapter 4. Your hair is like a flock of goats. Your teeth are like a flock of shorn sheep, each of which is not barren, but has borne twins. Hmm. And okay. she's talking about the sheep there or his teeth? His teeth, yeah. <laughs> your teeth are like a flock of shorn sheep. I don't know what I would think if somebody told me that. Uh-huh. And which it, and they're not barren. It's like they've just borne twins. Each tooth is born twins? I guess so. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to think about that too much. Oh, no, no. (laughs) Your temples are like a piece of pomegranate. Your neck is like a tower of David with a hundred shields of mighty men hanging on it. Your breasts are like two fawns that feed among the lilies. Your love is better than wine. Blow on my garden to make the spices flow out. 
eat your pleasant fruits. Okay, well, I have some idea with that. You want to talk about that one? No, <laughs> no, no, I don't. Um, okay, chapter five. I have eaten my honey and have drunk my wine. Eat and drink abundantly, my friends. I sleep, but I hear my beloved knocking at the door saying, Open to me, my sister. Ooh, sister. <laughs> I think he's speaking just like, you know, you can, hey, sis, but it not not like, I don't think it really, well, it might. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. I have washed my feet. Must I defile them again? Yeah, now think about that one. Uh-huh. Yeah, because feet, feet is usually a yeah. euphemism for yeah, a penis. I don't know what he's doing washing his feet or she or who's, who is this? Uh, <laughs> why? Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I think this is. I think this is, this is a guy? male. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the guy has washed his feet. He doesn't want to defile them again. Okay. Well, oh, actually, you know, I, I, I'm not sure it's a male. Let's well, he says, going. "Open to me, my sister," uh -huh. in the previous verse, and then he says, "I've washed my feet." But I think it's a he. A sister could be a, a woman's sister. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, open to me, my sister. No, no. No, he's saying open to me. Oh, open to me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My feet are washed, you know. Am I going to defile them again? Okay. You'll take the next one. Yes. My beloved put his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As I rose to open to my beloved, my hands and fingers dripped with perfume. As I opened to my beloved... But he had withdrawn himself. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Do we want to say that word? What word is Coetus that? interrupt. No, 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 no. <laughs> Those two words. No, sorry. no, no. <laughs> I think that's what he just did there, though. Anyway, chapter six. I don't six. know. He definitely withdrew himself. <laughs> uh, but I don't know what that might mean. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, okay, chapter six. You going to take that one? No, I just read the last one. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, chapter six. Your hair is like a flock of goats. Your teeth are like a flock of sheep. Each one is... Did we all read this? No. I mean, this we... line... He's repeating some lines. Where oh, she is. Okay, okay. Okay, well, it's such a good line. I guess he's going to repeat it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, your teeth are like a flock of sheep, each of which is not barren and has born twins. Your temples are like a piece of pomegranate. There are 70 queens and... Eighty concubines and an infinite number of virgins. You did that well, Steve. Chapter 7. Your feet are beautiful and your thighs are like jewels. Your navel is like a goblet filled with liquor. And your belly is like a heap of wheat and lilies. Yeah. Your breasts are like two fawns that are twins. Your nose is like the Tower of Lebanon that looks toward Damascus. <laughs> <laughs> your head is like Mount Carmel. And you have purple hair. Your breasts are like clusters of grapes. And your breath smells like apples. The roof of your mouth is like the best wine, causing sleeping people to speak. Let's get up early and go to the vineyards, where I'll give you my loves. Okay. <laughs> it sounds like a plan. Shall yeah. we do that later, honey? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chapter 8. This is the last chapter. Mm -hmm. I wish you were like my brother that suck the breasts of my mother. <laughs> then I'd kiss you and not be despised. I'd lead you to my mother's house and she would teach me and I would make you drink spiced wine from my pomegranate. His left hand is under my head and his right hand embraces me again. Don't disturb him until he pleases me. We have a little sister who has no breasts, but my breasts are like towers. Well, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it ends. That's the Song of Solomon. Yeah. You got through it, Steve. Yeah, it's not so, well, it's not so bad, but, you know, you kind of wonder about this. First of all, did you notice something that is missing from this? Uh, God. God. There's no God talking here. There's no mention of God. <laughs> There's only one other book in the Bible that, remember we had another book? Oh, yes, Esther. Esther, yeah. So this doesn't mention God. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with God or religion. And there's no violence in it. Well, there's no violence, but I'm, <laughs> yes, there's no violence. <laughs> That's kind of a plus. But, I mean, it has nothing about God, nothing about religion, as far as I can tell. Uh-huh. It's, it's all about sex, right? Yes. The love of a man and a woman 
and their um, mutual adoration for each yeah, other's bodies. Yeah, and sexual activity, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it seems to me like if we're going to be talking about what books are fit for children, yeah, you would wonder about this one, whether it would be like should it be in libraries and right stuff? next to Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think libraries have always had to deal with this, and I think they do a pretty good job. Yeah. But what would you do with a book like this? Since it is kind of a people do talk about these days. About libraries. And about what, libraries, what books should be in there. Mm -hmm. You would think this would be included in the discussion. And do you think the Bible is in every library? Oh, yeah. Okay. I think it's in every library. I, Probably I, several I, different yeah, versions. Several, several different versions, yeah. Hmm. And I think it should be, actually. The Song of Solomon is in the Bible. The Bible's an important book. It should be in a library. Yeah. Well, I think there is a problem giving access to kids, but it wouldn't be the Song of Solomon that I would say that would be the biggest problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> it would be all of the violence, and not, not just the violence. It's, it's commands by God telling people to do horrible things, really. Yes. If a child in school had a schoolmate who was gay, Leviticus... 2013 would tell him, would command him to kill him. That's Or if one of his classmates tried to convert him to another religion. Yeah, for sure. Those would both be something that would be, the response should be. Violence in a school. Even death. Yeah. It's a dangerous book for children to be exposed to, but it's an important book and everyone should, it should have access to it. Mm -hmm. So it's a difficult question there. Uh, so... How do you think Christians would make sense out of the Song of Solomon? I think they probably ignore it. Yeah, and I think they do. Yeah. And also Jews. They mm -hmm. also have the same problem because it's in the Old Testament, of course, the yeah. Hebrew Scriptures. Yeah. But they have had to make sense out of it. They have had to, because it's in the Bible. Of course, that was a tough decision both for the Jews and the Christians, whether it should be in the Bible. But somehow it got in the Bible. Yeah. They have to do something with it. And they've come up with a solution. Oh, what is that? Well, Christians say that the story here, or the, the uh, love, the expression of love, mm -hmm. and even the physical type of love, I guess, mm -hmm. is, <laughs> <laughs> is the expression of God, God's love for his church, in the case of Christians, or God's love for Israel in the case of Jews. That's weird. It is weird because <laughs> it's, we're definitely talking about a physical love. Uh huh. And so God, then I guess, of course, God's a man, right? I mean, he's a he's male. Everybody thinks seems to be agreed. They all both seem to be both groups seem to be agreed that he's male. Uh huh. So I suppose he has all the male parts, and so um, his foot, you mean? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he's got feet. Yeah. <laughs> He's got his feet down below his knees. <laughs> but anyway, the idea, what you have to kind of envision here mm -hmm. is all this breast talk and, you know, the, uh, all the other Things. talks. Yeah. Uh, so the church in Israel are women that are being... Uh, Participating in this yeah, they're, dance. Well, it's not... Sex. Yeah, it's, yeah, right. <laughs> You've got to visualize some things that you don't want to visualize, right? Uh -huh. God, I really, God just plain flat out having sex with the church yeah. or with Israel. It's weird. Yeah. But that's, it's in there the we Bible, go. And, <laughs> and we're done with it. <laughs> we got through it. Phew. All right, listeners, thank you so much for um, staying with us, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.